I'll show you what's going on, but you have to promise not to get mad. Okay, so I have this um, Game Boy here that I can't get working, but there are a few reasons for that. Um, if you look over on the left here, you'll notice I have an extension port, volume wheel, a little bit rattly. On the right, I'm missing the contrast wheel. And then the uh, power switch is gone too. And if you pop open the battery compartment, you can see another obvious reason why it's not working. Um, there's no battery terminal. Um, so what this is, this is an amalgam of parts. Um, this is basically straight out of my parts bin. Every now and then I get Game Boys. Um, I, I purchase a lot of Game Boys for various reasons, mostly because of who I am as a person. Uh, but every now and then you get stuff like this. Now this is obviously a Game Boy Advance motherboard, but if you look real close at the traces, you can see pretty much all of them have water damage. Uh, if we flip it over, just just look at that volume wheel and headphone jack. This thing looks like it, it spent years at sea. Um, I'm not going to be touching this in this video. I literally just got this in the mail today. I have no idea what I'm doing with it. But I sincerely doubt the board on this thing is salvageable. So I'm probably not even going to try and just extract the CPU and RAM and see what I can save off of that. But this, this is what I mean. Not every Game Boy is fixable, unfortunately. And that's just the way it is. So, like I said... Promise not to get mad. If you're gonna get mad, you need to close the video now. But let me uh, let me go ahead and let me go ahead and show you what I got going on in here, and you can see what's been rattling around. So this thing is still missing a few parts that I still need to reinstall. But the goal here is to get this thing working by the end of the video. You ready? Oh God. So the rattling is just some extra parts I had for that we'll uh, get into later. But um, you might notice something a little bit weird with this Game Boy Pocket, um, namely that the CPU is from a Game Boy Color, and the reason that there's no power switch or contrast wheel is because there should be a power switch where the contrast wheel is, and there's no uh, power switch because there's IR LEDs. Because this is a Game Boy Color. Ooh, but the bottom of the board says MGB. Well, how are you doing that? Well, it's easy, you see. It's two different boards. <laughs> so, what I did, I took two dead Game Boys, a Game Boy Color that um, I had been using for parts. Someone had tried powering it. Um, and had accidentally reversed the voltages and they blew out one of the protection diodes um, and instead of fixing it they made an absolute mess of things so I got the board for basically the cost of shipping and I've been using it for parts uh, I ended up pulling the volume wheel, the power switch and then the battery terminals and I was able to fix at least two other Game Boy Colors with the parts that I got from it Well. Ooh, and I pulled the cart slot. Uh, this is actually a cart slot I pulled out of a junk unit and I believe I was able to fix. You can see uh, places where the coating is completely missing. These should be silver all the way up, but you can see some exposed copper there because this thing was severely corroded. I believe I was able to clean it up though, so we should be good. While I had it off, I also cut out some of the um, some of the supports on the bottom so you can see you can actually see through it on the bottom there um, I created space for myself and I will elaborate more on that later um, I didn't bother doing anything about the power switch even though I could just pull the power switch from the board I got this from um, and that's what that's what this is for I have one of my momentary power switch boards and a 
clicky power switch that I'll be installing in place. Um, but yeah, the Game Boy, the reason this works is because the Game Boy Pocket, well actually the original Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Pocket, and technically the Game Boy Light, the entire Game Boy is consolidated on the top half of the board. The bottom half of the board is literally just for power handling and button inputs. So if you were to, say, cut that off and then feed this the proper power it needs, hence this wire here when I was testing, um, it'll work just fine as is. Uh, one of the caveats is because of how I cut it, the LED is no longer going to work, the power LED. I could wire it back in, but since it doesn't quite line up with... This is going in a Game Boy Pocket, if that wasn't already obvious. But since the LED doesn't quite line up with the Game Boy Pocket, you can see if we line up the screw posts here, the solder pads right here, uh, you can see it doesn't quite line up. It's a little bit too low. Um, and I could work around that by just using a different size LED or putting uh, getting a new LED, bending the legs, and you know, I, I could work around that, but it's easier to just not because the shell it's going in doesn't even have an LED window. So I'm not worried. Let me deal with these screws before I make an absolute mess of things. Okay. All right. Um, so aside from cutting apart the board, which I had the cart reader off when I did this, but I just cut it with a Dremel and then sanded it down until it was nice and smooth and ensured that there were no um, copper bits that are shorting together where they shouldn't be. Um, and then I reattached the cart slot. You can do this without detaching the cart slot, but like I said, this was in my parts bin. It didn't have a cart slot, so I cut it without putting it back on and that gave me a little bit extra clearance uh, so that I didn't have to accidentally nick the cart slot or something. The bottom half was a different story. Uh, that was also a parts Game Boy um, missing the contrast wheel, the uh, cart slot. I used this Game Boy to fix two other Game Boys as well. Um, one of them was a Game Boy Light. I don't remember what the other one was. It might have just been a pocket. And then, of course, it's missing the battery terminal. But I've got a replacement one and replacement speaker. Uh, I am a little bit concerned that this bottom board doesn't have a working headphone jack or AC port, which could give us some problems later on. But cross that bridge when, they, when we get there. I'm guessing that based on the fact that this headphone jack has been removed and I never bothered actually soldering it back in properly. Could be because it was a bad board, but I don't remember. Anyway, how I separated this one, you can see my cut is quite a bit less um, smooth compared to the Game Boy Color one, uh, but this was a board that I didn't really care to save. Now in hindsight, I probably should have tried fixing this one using parts from, um, you know, one of my severely water damaged boards, but it's a little bit too late. Um, oh well, this was a bad board too. Uh, what I did, I did the same thing that I do to trim shells for IPS kits. I just scored it a whole bunch with a knife and then literally snapped it. And then the step for cleanup was the same, I just used some sandpaper. So, but either way, this board is never going to work again solely because it just doesn't have a cart reader. If I get a cart reader, then I could technically fix this. But anyway, that's not the point. The point is we're hooking that up. So what we need to get this working, I have already verified that the Game Boy Color half of this board works. Uh, and to get the Game Boy Color half working, I just need to feed it 5 volts. Luckily. The uh, board I have down here, Game Boy Pocket Board. Let me pull this out so you can take it again under. This board already has a 5 volt regulator on it. 
The uh, only real issue is that this board is designed for like double A or triple A batteries, which means that I'm gonna get some shitty battery life assuming I get this working. But you know, bridge will have to cross when we get there. Um, so what I want to do, I want to get these connected up. And to do so, I need to connect up my power rail, my ground rail, all of the button inputs, and then the sound inputs. That should be it. Um, unfortunately, the Game Boy Pocket and Game Boy Color use a slightly different method for inputs. The Game Boy Pocket uses a diode matrix array. Um, look up keyboards if you're interested in learning about that. That's exactly what most keyboards are. Whereas the Game Boy Color uses a common ground switch method. Um, so I am going to have to remove these diode arrays on the back and then reroute all the connections, but it shouldn't be too bad. My only concern is that I'm going to have to use some really flat wire to make sure that I don't um, interfere with the battery compartment. I think I should be good because there should be some clearance based on the fact that there's screws here, so it'll have to be flat. But regardless, let's go ahead and pop these diodes off. And I will save these diodes because I believe I need them to fix a Game Boy Light that I have project I've been working on for a while. Set those aside, don't need them. I managed to pull out the dummy pin on both of them. So these are now five pin ICs, but that's okay. That sixth pin was uh, unused, I believe. Actually, to start, I should I should go about this a different way. Because I had a plan for um, rigidifying this board. Uh, but to keep it located within this shell, I believe I need a battery. Whatever this is called, battery thingy first. Um, I just had them and I misplaced them. One moment, please. Ah, see, the problem was I was looking everywhere except where they were supposed to be. That is to say, I actually put them away instead of just leaving them out. So, a company by the name of Cloud Game Store, you've probably heard me mention them before. Uh, has started making replacement battery tabs. Um, the positive tab in this board seems perfectly fine, so I'm not going to even bother messing with it. But the negative tab is completely missing. So we're going to uh, solder that in. Problem being, this kind of moves around a bit, so I have no idea how to do this. I'm just gonna hope for the best. bit more solder than I wanted. I'm putting this in a clear shell so I want it to look as OEM as possible. Let me remove some of this. Uh, 
that's actually really good. I just need to straighten that out. check something here I just have my multimeter all tangled up untangle that and I have my multimeter in continuity mode which means this should give me ground and I'm fairly certain that is a ground and that is a ground ooh that might not be a ground I'll have to double check that oh no it's a ground okay so I'm gonna do the same check on this one Pretty sure this is ground, yep. And that is ground. So the reason I'm checking that is because I plan to mechanically attach these two boards together with um, some brass wire, or brass rod. Get this out of her. Oh dear. I can't get it out of the packaging without just ripping the whole thing open. I don't want to do that. Vacuum packed. Urgh. Okay, that's clearly not happening. Unfortunate. Jesus. Okay, there we go. I got it. And I have four more if things go terribly wrong, which is entirely too likely. Okay. So the plan was to just cut off a small chunk, solder it onto that ground plane, and then solder it onto that ground plane. Uh, obviously, it's not going to look factory, but um, I can't really do it on this side because of the cart slot, so it is what it is. And I'm probably going to have to remove this little tab on the cart slot. This one's already broken off, so it shouldn't be too big of a deal. But, yeah. Here we go. reason for the board was, or the case was so I can get this lined up and sitting flat. But I think I'm going to pause while I do this because this is just going to be a lot of scraping and I have a lot of material to work my way through. So I'll be back. I knew that was going to be tedious. I had no idea how tedious it was going to be. Um, it was much easier to just keep scratching at the board with this and then clean up with this. So there you have it. Anyway, I think we're good to start on this side at least. I'm going to get this tuned. So 
solder sticks nicely to the bare copper. And I should have exposed more on this side. So I'm actually going to remove this copper and try again. Or uh, solder rather. You know what I mean. Probably good enough. Yeah. Then I can just start scraping again and I will be back. I'm also going to start on this side. Alright, got both sides stripped down. I didn't I wasn't able to strip as much as I would have liked on the Game Boy Color side, but I think we can still make it work. So now I just need to cut off chunks, and I am glad I went with the smaller rod because this stuff is huge. But I think it should be fine. I'm going to start from the other side because the other side's all chewed up. I might use this for something. on account of me not needing nearly as much as I bought. That's okay. Oh, I didn't think that was actually going to attach. I mean, I intended for it to do so, but I don't think this is lined up properly. All right, now I have one board that is surprisingly not crooked. Oh man. So excellent, excellent, okay. And now, if all goes well, I should have ground continuity on both halves. Boom. And I should not have a short on a voltage drill because that would be terrible. And I don't. Oh, right. So mechanically, these probably aren't that great because the surface area, especially on the Game Boy Color side, is pretty minimal. But I think this is going to be more than good enough for our purposes. And just in case this breaks, I'm probably going to run an actual wire on the back, though. And just for safekeeping, I'm going to keep it in here. 
Oh no. I was afraid of that. This one doesn't line up with the D-pad. I could strip it all down the middle, because I believe that's all ground. And then just lay down a big fat chunk of wire. Ooh, that might look even better, to be honest. Let me double check. So this is ground, yep, and that is not ground. Oh, yes it is. I just didn't have very good continuity on that via, or that one, or that one apparently. Yeah, that's ground. So now, I need to spend 20 minutes scraping that up. That'll be good. I will be back. I need to take care of some of this stuff. Like that little section there, I can't scratch that up. And then I'm going to double check with some board scans on the top for areas I can't scratch up. But otherwise, I'll be back. All right, I think I've got this. I think I've got it. I didn't strip off very much material because my rod is actually kind of small, but that's okay. It's also going to be a um, interesting thing to try soldering to. Pump the heat up on that. I have a feeling I'll need to, especially once I put this rod in. But hey, why not? What could possibly go wrong? Yeah, that's probably dangerous. I think it's working though. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Oh, what have I done? This is so bad. <laughs> I mean, it's working. Problem is, I don't have any solder going where I want it to right now. See, there's this giant gap between the rod and the board. Maybe. Just maybe. I give it way too much heat and then try pushing it into that gap. And obviously that's a big nasty solder ball bridge that we don't want. Alright, I don't think this is working. I mean, I know I said it was, but I think I need to strip more um, strip more solder mask back first. I think I got excited. That's okay. Easy enough to fix. There. All right, I'll be back. I'm going to try and strip off more. Oh man, all the coloring soaked through to the other side. The uh, st uh, factory stamp on the board soaked off. All right, significantly more copper stripped back this time. Um, I am going to just feed a load of solder in here and hope for the best. I think this should be the ticket. Thank you. 
Ooh, it ain't perfect, but it's a lot better. I'm gonna try feeding a little bit more solder in here. Hopefully not end up with that same disaster I got last time. Literally never done this before, except for like 10 minutes ago. But I mean, this is for today. <laughs> never done this. Of course, how you envision this happening and then how it actually happens are two entirely different things. But I think we'll be good with this. I'm just going to clean up the cart slot. Then we got to remove this. And that feels nice and solid. Let's clean it up and see how it goes. You can't even tell it's not factory. that burnt flux out of there so I can make sure that there are no shorts on the cart slot because troubleshooting that sounds like so much fun. And ideally I think I'd like to have this thing be able to boot games so I do see a couple spots that concern me. But I don't think there were shorts, just places where there should have been more solder. All right, all that, and all we have is a ground connected. We're getting there though. It's, it's a process. Alright, I need to go clean this up if I want it to ever be cleaned up. Ooh, there's also a solder ball down there. That's interesting. I think we're fine though. Ooh, there's a ton of solder on those pins now. Hopefully I can still fit wire down there. Might have to clean that up. 
I am going to pause once again momentarily to get the, um, the rest of this ink cleaned up. Alright, so this part is going to be kind of tedious because it's going to require a lot of cross-referencing. Um, I will put in the description some of the guides that I'm using. Um, I gotta thank my, my friend Hazi from the Game Boy Discord for compiling most of this. Um, without him, it's still doable, just a lot more difficult. Oh, and I should have grabbed my wire ahead of time. Why, why wouldn't... Why would I think of grabbing my wire ahead of time? Hang on. Alright, here we go. I have my 30 gauge Kynar wire. This is what I'm going to use. So I am going to start taking a little bit, stripping it, and then feeding it through the top here. And again, I can feed it through because I've already stripped the, um, or I've already taken a little bit of clearance off of the bottom of the cart slot. That should be B, <sighs> which we're going to have to find out where that goes. So unfortunately, the other guide that I have is for the other side of the board, which means I'm going to have to translate some things. So I believe B is this one right here that is probably under, yep. But that goes to one of these. I know it does that one. Oh, and unfortunately, that is under the CPU or the RAM. So I'm going to have to solder directly to the CPU. That is super convenient. It's not any of those, is it? No, it wouldn't be. It would be down here. Oh no, even deeper. Yeah, I'm gonna have to solder to that pin. Unfortunately, this is exactly what happens when you start taking apart PCBs. Oops. Oh well. Might as well commit now.
This is one of my favorite things about these kind of soldering. I just want a little bit of solder on the pin, but no. We get a solder ball that all I can do is move around. I foresee getting very frustrated with my filming setup and having to do this off camera. I also foresee that wire needing some, uh, some more solder. Now I could make this easier on myself and just solder it from the other side of the board, but uh, that's, that's not fun. Oh, I might have to do that actually for this one. You know what? I just had an idea. Alright, what if I take this just feed it through one of these vias as not being in used as not being used as not in use that's what I was trying to say the best one, but and then let me double check which one this is supposed to be. Is this middle one? This is significantly easier. Nice, clean, tidy, tucked away, etc. Still plenty of slack on the wire. One done. Seven? Seven to go.
this next one is A, which is right next to B, but I can also solder straight to these points here. Oh no, I can't not for A. I have to do the exact same thing. Pretty sure that's supposed to be A. Let me double check before just committing. Yep. Cool, cool. Realistically, I should switch tips if this is all I'm going to be doing, which it is. Still not going. Okay. New plan. I'm going to take a quick break, get a new tip on here, but I got to wait for this to cool down. All right. I think we've got it. Got a new tip. Woo! That, this, this tip, tip that I just rested my palm on, that's, um, that's still hot because I, of course, didn't wait as long as I should have. Woo! That was unpleasant. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Come on, you can do it. Got one of them. Well, let me get the last two. Oh, I think I just nope. Oh, there we go. The secret of the J tip is you just kind of shove it in the via, and capillary action pulls in the solder. Once you've got that heat conduction.
That's A and B. Look at that. We're almost halfway done. We're, we're a quarter of the way done. We. I'm a quarter of the way done. All right. Next, we have start and select. And this one, I believe, we can leave on this side. Because I'm fairly certain it goes to one of these. Which means it's multimeter time. I should just leave this on my desk. Okay. Uh, which one did we just do? Bottom one, which is select. So it should be that. But I bet. Oh, what the heck? It's not any of these. Uh oh. That's awkward. Oh. What is that? Okay. Just wasn't making good contact. It should be this bottom one that I have tinned. The top one? No, nope, the bottom one? Yeah. Okay. So it is what I thought it was. So we can just run that right there. And that's that. Gets faster as it go. I like that.
wiggle, make sure it's nice and solid. And indeed it is. Place that nice and flat. Halfway done. Just gotta do a few more. Might end up crossing over to the side of the board again. I have to clean this flux. It is driving me insane. I cannot think with this flux here. I don't know what that is. It's a wonderful noise, isn't it? thinking I'm gonna forget about it and then I'm gonna go to test it and something's not gonna work right because there's flux where there shouldn't be flux cool four more Why don't I tin these ahead of time? That one is down. Which fairly certain is that one right there. Which means it connects up to one of these. And are these accessible? They are, look at that. Let me double check that's the right one. Yep. So it's going to be these four vias right next to the CPU. Sorry, I know that's really small, but deal with it. These tinned ahead of time. And then this wire only has to go to right there, which makes stripping it actually kind of difficult because I cut it kind of short. But I'll make it work. Made it work, rather. That's on there nicely. That is right, which is one of these. Ooh, and my wire has become knotted.
I'm gonna have to spend some time to denot this sometime. Or maybe I'll get lucky. I can just do that. Right. Let's double check. Right is this one. Which is that one. That one is left. Which is this one. So that is that one. Cool. Just double checking because sometimes when flipping the board over, I uh, don't quite flip it in my brain and I mess up the orientation. Speaking of, I already forgot which it was. So it should be the right. Yes, left is right. And one more. Still need to wire up power and audio. The power should be real quick. And audio I probably should have done first because I believe a lot of the vias I need are right where I just ran all my wiring. But 
getting there. I mean, I could always just scooch it out of the way. Five volt out goes to here. We can strip that and solder to that. So this is going to be five volt out. These two chunky vias right next to where I have this big solder ball. But I think I'm getting ahead of myself. This is my power switch. This is going to handle the switching. I need to wire this up to this. Does that line up? No, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Um, and I still haven't figured out where I, I'm putting this. I think I'll just have to... I might actually end up lifting this chip here. Oh, dear. I felt it hit my foot. Oh good, that fits. I was totally expecting that. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yep. Oh, and you know what, actually? Hang on. This goes in here. It means I can put my power switch over here. Oh, nope, that won't fit. Let's go on the other side. Okay. I may have to place it behind the speaker. I didn't really plan this out. And I really don't like the look of it right there. Not to mention it doesn't actually fit there. There we go. You can barely even see that rod, unfortunately. I was kind of hoping that would be nice and front and center, but with the screen in there, not so much. At least this one clears the screen. This one would have if I'd moved it up a little. Oh well. Too late. Plan B for this was to stick it down here. And that is actually perfect. So that's what I'll do. So we need five wires. I will also need to insulate the back of this because there are components. But I think we should be fine. There should be plenty of room.
Oh, no way. That would be way too convenient. Of course not. Nope, that doesn't work either. Cool. Sorry, I'm trying to figure, figure out the best way to do this with my limited desk space. But I think the best way is going to just you be to use this whole thing Because I need to take my little switch here and solder some wires onto it. It is in a 3D printed bracket. It's actually super glued into the bracket. doing this to me. Get off of there. Because I couldn't think of a better way to do it. But um, the bracket itself will fit into the Game Boy Pocket shell without modifying the shell. It'll look good, trust me. I've already, uh, I've already planned some of this out. Quite frankly, it might be break time. I've been going at it for almost two hours at this point. That will go in there, and then we need the wire to come down and over to here, which means it needs to be less than that long. But we'll cut it long, just to be on the safe side. Cool, cool, cool. So for ground, I'm going to use one of the uh, old switch shield pads. That should be a nice solid ground.
vertical. There we go. Okay. So this is my um, soft latching power switch design. I designed it with the uh, Game Boy Advance power switch in mind. but um, So the battery minus pad goes to ground. The power C goes to power, like the input of the Game Boy. And then power 2 goes to the battery input. So we need to find a 5 volt rail on this side of the console and we need to hook into it. I could use the um, power switch, but technically the power switch isn't actually connected to anything. I'd have to run a jumper on the other side of the on the other side of the board too. So I'm thinking I'm just going to have to run a jumper. And uh Instead of running a jumper, why don't I just run it straight to where it needs to go on the bottom of the board. So, oh, you know what? It would actually work if I ran it from here. So, purple out. We want to run from here. No. I think we need to jump. Hmm. I need to think about this. One moment. Okay. It took me a little bit, but it's. I, I was overcomplicating things. So. On a perfectly working pocket, we have the positive battery terminal connected to this power rail that runs up into the switch. And then the switch is connected up to this power rail on this side, which is this thick trace that I don't actually have anywhere to probe unless I go all the way up to the switch. But if I try and connect this positive, which is the voltage regulator input to the battery, notice there's no continuity. But if I switch it on, test again, there's continuity. So what I need to do is I need to wire the input to this via and then the output to this pad. And that's it. I was way overcomplicating things. But it's okay. I am gonna make it work. I need to strip this first. So this pad will be the voltage common pad on my power switch. Ooh, this is the wrong tip for this particular joint. So this is why I like that K-series. There. 
leave plenty of slack. And actually, I should probably be using thicker wire for this, but uh, this is on the uh, this is on the limit of what you know. What? Let's just play it safe. This wire should be fine, but it is only 30 gauge, and um, this is a Game Boy Color with a backlight kit. I want to make sure that there's plenty of uh, overhead. So in this case I am going to use some 26 gauge Kynar instead. Plus it'll blend in with the PCB better so Consider it an aesthetic choice if you like. Also, yes, those capacitors, if you were looking at those, those are tombstoned and that is intentional. I feel like that's a detail that someone probably noticed and has been going crazy about. Alright, now power two. I'm just going to try and go for that via there. Should be, and of course we'll double check, that one right in the middle. Yep. That'll do. Come on. There we go.
Just did my nice wire routing and then I pulled it all up by accident. Okay, I can salvage that. But not least, I will need to solder these switch down. I want that on the other side. Cool, cool. That is power sorted. All we need now is to insulate that and then run some sound. Might as well keep going because what the hell, why not? Almost done at this point. Might as well finish it. So for insulation, I am going to grab a little bit of Kapton tape. I should have actually put this on beforehand. It's kind of difficult to maneuver. Shove that away in there and just pretend it doesn't exist. And if I want to test this, which I definitely do, might as well. I'm going to need plug that in. I should have plugged in the screen first. There we go. Ooh, how's about instead of 5 volts, we bring that down to a more reasonable 2.4. And 
here goes nothing. I can see it is not pulling anything, which is ideal. And then we should just switch it on. It's pulling 0.1, so it's pulling 10 milliamps, which if I recall correctly is the is the screen not getting power. Uh, hang on. I, uh, I forgot something. <laughs> I forgot to wire up the 5 volt output of the, um, I forgot to wire up the output of this. <laughs> Whoops. I'm going to use these vias right here. But I got to run a wire down there. Or I could run a wire up and then all the way across. That would work too, but that seems kind of I don't know. I'd rather do all the wiring on the back if possible. <laughs> All right, where's my wire? So now I need to find a five volt rail on this side or I need to just run a wire over. Um, those are all under the CPU. So we need something after the power switch, because if we just hook up to the power switch... Oh, wait. This is what the multimeter is for. So does this connect up to that? Nope. What about that? Yes. Actually, wouldn't be surprised if we could just plug it in somewhere over here. Unfortunately, not that. But I suppose I could run a wire all the way up and over. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, there's got to be a better way, though. I don't like that spot, even though it's perfectly fine. Alright, screw it. We'll, we'll just use that spot. I'm sure it'll be fine. Alright.
This isn't working. I'm surprised. Kind of expected that to work. In fact, I was relying on it to work. There we go. Trim that flush because that's probably gonna cause problems if I don't. It may come as no surprise that my phone is dying, so bear with me. I'm gonna plug it in. Alright, now I think we are solid to test this out. have all of the wiring this time. As you can see, it is pulling zero, and we can switch it on. Boom! Of course, I see a problem. The screen is way off center, but um, this is one of those OSD kits, so I can move it, and I should be able to press and hold this button to turn it off. <laughs> uh, let me get... There it is. Everdrive. <laughs> so yeah, of course it has power problems. It's a pocket. I'm not surprised at all. We will have to replace that at some point. But that point is um, 
Not today. Not today, I sir. But let me get. Do we not have one here new? I should just title this video Watch as Mako tries to get shit that he should have grabbed ahead of time. I didn't finish wiring up the buttons. I forgot something. I forgot to wire up the grounds. I just did the uh, inputs. Forgot to do the grounds. But look at that. Huh? What do you think about that? Yeah, that's sweet. I am... I'm stoked. I think, however, it is... Very nearly time to uh, call it quits. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and upload this because this is already like two hours of footage and I'm, uh, I'm about 75% of the way done, but I still have quite a bit of work to go. I still have to wire in a speaker. I have to fix the audio circuits um, and then wire up the audio circuits because I don't know if that headphone jack works. And then I still have to finish wiring up the buttons, which should actually be really easy, but maybe, maybe not. We'll find out on next week's episode of Dragon Ball. All right, so when we last left off, I had gotten the uh, buttons and the power wired up, and it looked like everything was working. Um, I still need to do a little bit more wiring on the buttons and a little bit more wiring for the audio, including installing a speaker. Uh, there is one small concern that I have with how this is wired uh, that I will have to address eventually, but it should work for now. Um, I need to do more research onto this, but apparently leaving the... Um, LCD voltage rail unconnected with no load on it might not be the best idea, um, but not 100% sure. Like I said, need more research. So without further ado though, let's go ahead and continue. I forgot to get my tools out ahead of time. I need that, I need that, and I need that. So I want to add a small wire just to serve as an auxiliary ground. In the off chance this rigid board breaks. Um, I mean it really shouldn't but it'll make me feel better so that's what I'm doing. I don't know if this is some standard somewhere but I've never liked relying on mechanical connections for um, to conduct electricity. I also totally just flattened the wire insulation by accident. But it's okay, we don't need that insulation.
There we go. All right. So I only wired up half the buttons. Um, like I was saying last time, because the Game Boy Pocket uses a diode matrix array for the buttons and the Game Boy Color uses a um, common ground arrangement, we need to connect the other side of the buttons to ground. Um, and luckily, that is this these six vias right here. You should be able to connect them all. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to take this wire that I had cut for something. <laughs> Actually, no, I'm not. Because I have a thing full of shorter wire that I can source. <clears throat> Ooh, that is not the wire I thought it was. I thought this was solid core, not stranded. That's awkward. Alright, well in that case I am going to use this wire, because I want solid core. I also need to tin all six of these holes here. Tension is to slip this in. One of the holes. Then I can trim it, bend it over, and feed it into the other one. Just connect all of these together and then we'll connect one of them to ground. I think that's connected. It's very hard, difficult to tell. Well, if it's not, it is now. Okay.
An easier way to do this would have been to use longer wire and feed it in properly. This will do. Cut that one a little long because I got to trim them from the other side anyway. Easier to feed in this way. Oh no, I messed up one of them. Yeah, sorry. It's just one of those days. Come over, trim these flush. And I'm pretty sure this last via right there is ground. Let me double check that. in that one.
There we go. Now, if we check this ground, every other pad should be grounded. Nice. Perfect. Alright, last step is audio. And that should be relatively easy because I can use a cheat sheet. I have a perfectly working Game Boy Pocket C uh, PCB here. And if you'll notice, the amp is labeled AGB, or AMP, MGB. And what's that? Game Boy Color uses the exact same amp. How interesting! Yeah. So I could just trace the pin out by, um... Putting one probe on the headphone jack, and then just drag it along the amp until it beeps. Which, I thought this was that one. Nope, it's that one. So, pin number two of the headphone jack, uh, which actually, we probably want to use the uh, electromagnetic filters instead of just going deep on the pins, but we'll make it work. I would, however, like to use blue wire for audio, so I will be right back. I will go find that. Right. It was uh, right in front. I completely missed it several times. Um, also, I found this that I didn't know I had. This is what I would have used for power um, had I known I had it. 26 gauge wires overkill, but 28 would have been perfect. Uh, but I'm not going to redo the wiring just because I found better wire or more appropriate wire, not necessarily bitter wire. Uh, one thing... Ooh, that goes to the resistor array. I'll have to double check that. If I can wire right up at the resistor array, that'd be even better. Oh uh, yeah, because I want to use the top of the resistor. That's even better, because that's right by the um, link, um, link port. Uh, cartridge connector. So I dislike wiring audio like this, but I don't really have a choice. Ideally I'd run it completely separate from the power, but it's got to go from here to here, and I kind of already ran the power. So unless I rewire that, that's not happening. Though I might have to, because I can't get this to feed.
that or I run it under here. Yeah, that'll work. This is where I should have ran the um, button controls in the first place, but it'll work. Come on, there we go. Nice. Pull that up and under, pull that over, and let's double check the wiring. So we are going from the right pin. And that goes to pin number three. Yep. Uh, and of course that feeds underneath the um, the thing, so I'd have to feed this through a via to attach it from this side. Yeah, it's probably one of these vias right here. Hmm, I think that's what I want to do. For not to have wires just coming out the uh, front, but do what you gotta do. I'm also gonna have a really hard time tracking this. Where's my other probe? There it is. One of these. I just know it is. It's that one. Cool. So this is RA2L out.
I'll cut that way too long. Alright, I might have to pause here in just a moment coming up. Um, because I have been recording a lot and my phone is basically full. See if I can't get the other one first though. This one is probably L out, but I will double check that in just a second. Or, no, I just did L out, so it's probably R out, that one. Whatever the one I just whatever the one I didn't just do. The one of that. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, that's that. So I'm going to do the same exact thing. how much slack there was on that. Okay. Oh wow, there really wasn't that much slack. That was almost disastrous. I'm tempted to trim the other one now to, uh, to deal with, to make them match. I like these are differential pins that need to be the same length, though. That would be unfortunate. Alright, so that is two pins. Ah, tuck that in there. Nice. 
Nice, nice, nice. Um, I think we just need one more. For the detect switch. Oh, but you know what? I will take a quick break. I'll be right back. Alright, so I did a little bit more reverse engineering of the circuit and just general cleaning of the board. I cleaned up some of the flux. Um, we've only got one more wire I need to solder. The other wires should already be connected with with how this thing is where weird. With how this thing is weird. Um, it is pretty weird, to be honest. But with how this thing is wired, um, the speaker shares some of the connections with the headphone jack and the uh wait i forgot to connect up um the detect switch so yeah we need two more i'm sorry i was getting ahead of myself but it's okay it is a okay unfortunately i am going to have to run two wires from down here though um and to be honest i'm thinking about just running them straight up the middle but, eh. I think I'll run them over this way and then up. I think that is the best, best choice given my options. I'm trying to make this look reasonable as well as work. But unfortunately, with how I ran my other wires, this one's getting caught I'm trying to feed it through. But my choices might be limited. I might actually have to go over up on the front. I don't think I have space for any more wire under there. I should have carved out more. Part of the problem also is how I just tuck those wires in there. But maybe I get lucky. Maybe I feed these over that way and then under that way. Yeah, no, that's not happening. Okay, so if I feed this on top, I could go up and around like that. Unfortunate. Or I can get it under on this side, which I don't like, but just the detect switch, so it should be fine. Yep. I can try scratching up the trace that I need to solder to. I don't really like that idea, though. Rather just run it where it needs to go. Okay. So hopefully this audio jack works. Not gonna have to desolder it. Though in hindsight, I think I just realized why I never soldered it in the first place, because solder is not sticking to the pins. This thing was so corroded. There we go. Nothing a ton of flux can't handle. Right. <clears throat> right, 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 right. So we are doing pin 5, and that goes to... I thought it was pin 3. Nope, we're doing pin three. 
Uh oh. Which pin am I doing? Nope, it is pin 5. Um, pin 5 is connected to ground. If we insert headphones, it should disconnect. Uh, which means I need headphones. So I can make sure I get the right pin. That is my headphones. That is headphones. Alright. So to plug that in. These two should no longer connect. That is the case. And then this goes. Is it to pin 3? Nope. It's this one up here. One, two, three, four. Fourth pin. I'll just run that up with the power wires because why the heck not? Which pin did I say it was? It was pin three. Pin four. Ah, uh, but of course that runs to this side. need to wire it to that via the one labeled SW for switch. And I might have cut this a little bit too short because I wasn't planning on running it through the board. Oh wow. Never mind. I think we're good. I didn't realize that was only going right there. So it is literally right next to. I almost ran it through the V I need to solder it to. I'm still going to solder it on this side because it's so much easier than getting an iron in under the cart slot, but. I can still cut it quite a bit shorter. Ooh, that wasn't what I wanted to happen.
might have to redo this wire if the insulation got scratched. I don't want to deal with some weird intermittent fault that is that just causes my games to crash or my audio to go out. There we go. You can hardly even tell there's a wire there. Okay. One more. One more. Then we're done. So this last one is the top speaker wire. The bottom speaker wire should already be connected up to where it needs to go, which is basically just right there. Yep. And so the top speaker wire goes to the third pin. Let's double check which view that is. It's probably, no, no, uh-oh, I could have sworn it was that one. U3 R out, U3 L out, why are these two shorted? Okay, I will have to consult the schematic, I will be right back. Alright, so I was looking at the schematic, getting confused as to why this one is showing a short. Um, and then I just traced it by literally, you know, going up along the board scan. Um, and the key is my cut board. So if we look at these four traces right here on the bottom, on the bottom right here, one, two, three, four, this left one is the top speaker wire, which does indeed go to pin number three. So that's what we need to do. Need to hook that up. So I need my wire and uh, I need to run it somewhere. Oh wait, left. That doesn't run to, no it doesn't. Okay, so I suppose I could just solder my speaker directly to this wire. The alternative is trying to scratch up just a little bit of that trace to solder to right down there, but I don't think that's going to happen. I would like to be able to run this one wire, one last wire. That felt like it went through and then got caught on something. I think my life would be made quite a bit easier if I just untucked these for a moment. Just a moment, mind.
Nope, apparently not. There is only so much space. Oh, I see a nice big hole right there. Oh, my iron went to sleep. Maybe I should take a hint. can only do so much against this worn out headphone jack apparently it's probably gonna have to come out because after all why would I why would I keep a bad headphone jack in this masterpiece I'm just going to solder that straight to the capacitor. I'm not even going to bother trying to feed it through to the other side. And then we're done, right? Wrong. Very nearly done, though. So close. wires down at some point but all I have is hot glue so I will uh, not do that right this second okay so next I need to reattach this capacitor and then one more capacitor because this capacitor might be why my everdrive wasn't booting uh, so that came off. That is not a Game Boy Color. That is Game Boy Pocket. There we go. One, two, three. That came off the third pin from this side. So the reset line. And it goes to ground, so I should be able to just pop it right in there. Uh, my only concern is that um, the screen is going to go there, so hopefully it won't interfere. Hopefully.
Oh no. There we go. It's a beautiful looking joint. All right, and then there is one more capacitor, but I shouldn't have to trace it because it's right there. This one right here was C47. I desoldered it before I cut the board. The other one, however, goes to... Oh, I sincerely doubt we need that one. That one's on the five volt rail to ground, I believe. Yeah, that's ground and that's five volts. Okay. So again, we could put it on this side, just solder it right to the pin and then see if we can make a stretch to this bus bar here. I'm thinking, um, oh no. Nintendo's engineers obviously would not have put it here if it wasn't important. So let's figure something out. Thinking, let's get this desoldered. Come on. By the way, yeah. That's why I cut this board in the first place. All right, all right. I can make that work. I can, I can work with that. I can even work with the small chunk of wire I just found. Come on. There we go. Right into that nice, thick ground plane. And there we go. Just like that. Oh. I just want a pre solder joint. And I'm 
how to practice with this tip. I got to do it with my K series if I want a pretty t uh, pretty joint. But this tip's hot, so I can't switch to my key series. There we go. Now, aside from physically adding in a speaker, we're done. I don't really like the look of this one. And unfortunately, that is my best looking one. So, uh, shit. Uh, I have that, but that's even worse. Uh, okay, I guess I don't really have a choice. I guess I need to buy some more of those uh, nice new funny playing ones. Well, that's going to fall off, isn't it? Yeah, it sure will if you pull it off. I know. But we can do it properly, or we can do it twice, so... Just do it properly. That is not great, but it worked, so fuck it. <laughs> Probably swapping the speaker out, so I don't think it's going to make too big of a deal. Oh, shoot, I turned my iron off. One more thing. Don't worry, this one's going to be good. Because at this point, I can start putting this together. Get a cotton swab, clean up that mess. Get it nice and saturated. I don't think that's visible, but why take the chance? All right. It has been a long journey, but we're in the final stretch. Just, just miring my work here.
not going to use the touch sensors because of course not. I will however use... Oh god, I wonder if the battery line on this particular one works. Uh, I mean, we can wire it up. It's not... Um, I don't know. I'd have to... I'd have to run a wire over to... I suppose I could connect it up to this. Eh, we're gonna skip it for now. This thing's running off triple A's. It's not gonna be pretty anyway. <laughs> just do select A and B. select and I'm going to use these vias right here because they should be connected so select Is my multimeter finally dead? No. Okay, that's green. So select should be I thought it was over here. Oh, that's awkward. is over here though, so I'll use this one. Oh, and then this is going to be A and B, isn't it? Yep. So I'll use this three. Perfect. Select this one's A, so we'll do B first. Now, we are done with soldering iron, I hope. 
I haven't tested this yet. But we should be good. I would like to insulate this just in case. Normally I'm not too worried about these things, but I've got wires going just about everywhere, so let's just play it safe. Now there is one more part I meant to print, uh, but I forgot, so I'll do it later. And um, it should be a super quick print. I just haven't actually designed the part yet, so I can't print what I don't have. I would like to print a cover for the IR LEDs. And we absolutely need to tuck that in. Using the shitty little insulation sheet that it comes with would have been better, but again, work with what you got. Wires topped in. This should sit nicely in here. I forgot to insert it before the board, so I'm going to have to try and angle it. There we go. Oh, and I forgot I desoldered this wire to make my life easier. I gotta reattach it. Thought I was done. Just a little bit more. There we go. Case goes together. All right, all right, all right. 
Let's not get uh, too excited. <laughs> oh yeah, that's so good. Start to continue game, yes. No. Oh, select. It says start. Oh god, do I have my select and start reversed? Let's find out by turning it off. <laughs> Let's see if the Everdrive boots now. Now, you may notice, because I certainly did, that there's no sound. And unfortunately, it is still boot looping with the Everdrive. We're almost there, though. Oh, we're almost there. Uh, do, 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 do. Where is, I need, I need a thing. I need a thing, I'm gonna go grab a thing. All right, I'm back with the thing. Huh, huh? No sound still. I wonder if we have headphones. Oh, and of course they're all tangled now. Nice. <sighs> Anticipation, it's killing me. Nope, no sound whatsoever. Not to troubleshoot that, but uh, how's that for for awesome? Oh, let's actually continue. And yeah, I have my start and select reverse. That's that's a whoops. <laughs> uh, whoops. So there's an easy fix for that, I think. Every other button seems to work though, so. <laughs> uh, let us first. Put this back to normal colors because as hilarious as that palette is, I don't think I can handle it. <laughs> uh, man, that's years of muscle memory getting really confused with the start and select. Okay. But, uh, yeah, look at that. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? You press and hold that, and apparently it turns off because I flexed something a little bit too hard. Alright, so instead of figuring out where I cross my wires, I'm just going to switch it right here. Let me find my cheat sheet. Select is that one, start is that one. So I need to swap these two red wires on DA2, the top, the left, the right and left. Man, 
So close, though. Ooh, I should have taken the opportunity to swap soldering tips, too. There we go. Wiring fixed. Now, I don't know what is up with the uh, speaker. I'm gonna have to do some more investigating. Um, I think, I, I don't know what it could be, to be honest. I, audio may have just never worked on this thing, to, to be, uh, to be frank. it eventually. I guess there will be a part three. I am going to take a very long break though. I'm going to go take a nap uh, for approximately eight hours, probably less. And then, ugh. The wires are in the way again. Annoyingly enough, these are backlight kit wires, not even the bodge wires I had to use to connect the two Game Boy halves. Those right there. screw in there before they have a chance to work their way over again. That's in, that's in, that's in, that's in, that's in, that's in now, and that's in. That is it. Actually, we're going to do put on crystal again. Well, it was working. Now I've got to find out why it's not working. It could be a short. Let me try one more thing. Could also just be the batteries. Nope. Oh, well, that's a total, total bummer after all that. Part 
That's okay, I can do the installation on that screen kit better anyway. With no sound and no power LED, it's actually kind of harder to diagnose this because the problem could just be the backlight kit. It's probably not, but it could be. that is stuck in there. I don't see any broken connections. That capacitor shouldn't be shorting on anything. I don't know what it could be. But while I'm in here, that that way. And uh, do a little bit of insulation. Maybe. There we go. Just want to ensure that nothing is shorting on anything. Especially since this did work and then I put it together and it stopped working. Ooh, the other chance is it could be squeezing together and one of the voltage rails could be shorting across the gap. It's probably not the case, but it's entirely possible. I am going to take a little bit of wire. What the hell? And cut that out, apparently. This isn't wire, this is Captain. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Throw that across there, and across there. And try again. in, that's almost in, but if I screw it down we should be good to throw my screwdriver. And launch one of the screws, nice.
There we go. Something was shorting. How you like that? It even works on the AC plug. Tuck that stuff back in there. I'll find that lost screw in a few minutes here. Oh, it's so beautiful. Let's try the best batteries known to man. Triple A's. What the hell? Oh no, is it the shielding? No? Okay. Wait. We're going any further. Works off that. Did I blow a fuse? I might have blown the fuse. Yep, I blew the fuse. Okay. Well, that's an easy fix, assuming I have the parts. I don't think I do, but I have something that I can make work. So, where is F2? F2 is in parentheses. Is F2 on the front? Please don't tell me F2 is on the front. No, there's nothing on the front. Well, what the hell? On this one, that's labeled R6. I am confused. How did I blow the fuse in the first place? Shouldn't have been this. That is nicely insulated. I have no idea. Maybe it was something on the front. Uh, this goes to that. No. This goes to that. Yep. And that goes to that which goes to here, but only when it's on, because that goes to there. No, this goes to here. Then that goes to that. Well, what the hell? Because this goes, where did I say this goes? That goes into there.
I think I did a dumb. Um. I bet my batteries are just dead. <laughs> Triple A's, am I right? Probably aren't any fresher than Duracells. Oh, what the hell? Officially confi oh my goodness, what if it's the power switch or the power port that's gone bad? This was a junk board and that was a junk port. Because it still has the stock power input wiring. Those screw posts are going to take too much more of this. Oh no, it is. Pretty sure those two are supposed to be shorted when nothing is plugged in. No? Oh yeah. Yep. That is it exactly. Oh no. Okay, so I'm gonna have to rewire this thing next time, but I'll do that. Um, so stay tuned for the next part when I figure out what the hell's wrong with the audio, probably replace the headphone jack, figure out what the hell's wrong with this jack, probably replace that too. And uh, yeah, until next time, thanks for watching guys. All right, so when we last left off, I had got this mostly working um, there was still no sound, and, uh, oh dear. It seems to work intermittently. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand. Let me try switching it off. And there it goes. Ah, I know what happened. So there is one problem with this power switch that I have, and unfortunately you just can't power cycle this thing too quickly, and I keep forgetting about that, and I don't really know workaround with this particular design. Um, so when you turn it off, you just I don't know, give it, give it 10 seconds or so and it'll come back on, or remove the power, and then you can power cycle it nice and quick. So I think that is the issue I was having. I don't know if this bypass was completely necessary. I installed a bypass for the AC jack because like the um, 
volume, there is a physical switch inside the jack that disconnects a line when you insert something. So in the case of headphones, it disconnects the speaker because when you plug in headphones, you don't want external sound. And then in the case of AC, when you plug in an external power, it disconnects the batteries because they're connected in parallel. So if you plug in an AC jack with this bypass installed, it's gonna try charging the batteries, which if you have nickel metal hydride batteries, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but that's not how they're supposed to be charged, so bad things can happen. Uh, and if you have alkaline batteries, bad things will happen because that's not how they charge. Anyway, I think I've got the issue sorted out. All that's left now is to get um, sound working, and I figured this might be a longer video um, but I had a I had to think about it today while I was at work and uh, Well, I realized the issue and it's kind of dumb and I'm actually really disappointed for not realizing it earlier But I just need to install a wire from the power switch to the amplifier because and I completely forgot about this until I was reviewing the schematic, but the amplifier chips in pretty much all Game Boys, in fact I think all of them, I don't have the schematic for the Game Boy Micro so I don't, don't quote me on that, but every other, mm, I don't remember, okay, most of them, uh, the original Game Boy, Game Boy Pocket, and Game Boy Color at the very least, uh, run the amp off of battery power direct instead of running it through the system regulator. So, long story short, I have no sound because there's no power getting to the amp. I forgot about that. That should be a really easy fix. Uh, I was just about to turn on my iron, but I remembered I still have the tip that I don't like on here. So, oh, that's not how that's supposed to come apart. Let's see if we can... I can't actually get that off. It might have something to do with the fact that it was still way too hot when I swapped tips the first time. But... All you J-Series tips out, tip lovers out there, keep on keeping on. But uh, K-Series is where it's at. Alright. So, what we need to do is we need to wire up... I need to double check the wiring on this speaker because I think I got the wrong... I got the wrong one, I think. Let me uh, switch that to BP mode. It goes to that. And that is on the wrong... No, it's not. That's on the correct pin. Uh, I just have it wrong in my head. So, the speaker goes to pin 3 of the amplifier, and then we need to wire up external power to pin 4. I just had that backwards in my head. Uh, so I'm going to use this capacitor right here to do that and I am going to hook up with one of these wires right here. Uh, I need wire to do that though. I'm going to use one of these blue ones because why not? Actually, I'm going to use the black one. I haven't used the black wire yet. Not that it really should make a difference, but excuse to use new wire, so I'll take it. Oops. Come on. I guess we need to tin that. Alright, and I already forgot the uh, 
the wiring of that, so I believe I want pin 2. Because I have this named kind of weirdly. I can't actually see the labels on it. Okay, it's that bottom one. And I should just have to plug that in, and that should be the end of my audio woes. Look at that, how easy was that? Did you hear that? Do that again. <laughs> ah, that's so good. Okay. Um, let me get. Let me get. Let me get. Let me get. Game. I know it's probably hard to hear over the background noise. I'm using stock parts, so it's not going to be any louder than a stock Game Boy. Let me, uh, let me try some headphones here. Oh, it's working, and I have stereo. Oh. I had no idea that these headphones, or that this headphone jack worked. Oh, this is so good. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, the only thing left is I need a cover for the power switch hole. Um, I am going to go pause for a moment, model something up and print it. I will be back. Well, it's going to be a little bit more than a moment. Um, I'll be back. This is so exciting. Interesting turn of events. It appears to be working on my EverDrive now, too, so... I don't know, I guess... I guess I just needed to take a break and, um... You know... Not work on this. There's my plug. Mm hmm mm hmm Ooh, it doesn't fit that great. That's okay, we'll, f we'll figure it out. It'll go in. I will uh, tweak the model so that the uh, IR LEDs fit. Okay. Well, a little bit more tweaking. I'll be back. All right, take two. It's smaller, differently designed, but it should work just about the same. Just goes in right here. And there is a cutout for LEDs that is still not centered properly. I will adjust that. But it might just be good enough. Oh no. Alright, well it's it's just barely good enough, but I'm gonna fix it anyway because I really don't really not vibing with that. So take three. Alright, third tries the charm. 
I kind of goofed the model and left a gap, but it should be fine. It should actually fit this time. And there we go. All said and done. So the uh, shielding for the cart slot is actually a little bit too short because it looks like the Game Boy Color cart slot is um, just physically smaller. You can see there's a gap here. It's usually right up against the battery compartment. And right there you can see the wiring through there. Uh, if I add a sticker here, that'll all be gone which I might just do. Not to hide the wiring, but just because I kind of want to put a sticker on here. Uh, let's, uh, let's try it out. There's that. It's a little weird, but all right. Ah! Oh, there it goes. Yeah! Okay. Power switch replacement dot g-code. Why is that on my EverDrive? Okay. Ah uh, <laughs> Here's something you can't do on a Game Boy Pocket. Or not. Something you can't do on this either. <laughs> Third try? No. Okay. Yeah, so it's still uh, a little bit glitchy with the flash part, unfortunately. I kind of expected that. I'm still disappointed, but I kind of expected that. Let's try the easy flash. Oh, uh, here we go again. Nope. Won't even boot the easy flash. All right, so flash carts aren't a thing, unfortunately. Um, well, I mean, obviously they are a thing. There's two right here. But they aren't a thing that will work on this, but I still have regular games I can play. And I don't think it's a brightness thing, because it's already pretty darn low. But, I mean, it does work. It's Pokemon Crystal. I like them apples. I have all my buttons. I can talk to people. I can hit B. Pause. I can hit select. It's all done! I, uh, 
Well, there is one more thing I would like to do, um, but that is not going to be for a considerable amount of time because I don't want to do it right now, and because even if I did do it right now, it'll still take a few weeks. Um, but I am going to replace the uh, voltage regulator in the Game Boy Pocket half of the motherboard. Uh, I almost called it Game Boy Pocket. It's technically not. Um, I, I don't know. The existing one is working. I don't know why I'm holding B. But I just don't like... I don't like that it has a negative 19 volt rail that is not connected to anything. Um, Gekio, someone I uh, highly revere, who knows his shit, has taken a look at the uh, schematic of the original Game Boy. And um, when unconnected, the negative 19 volt rail doesn't really have any regulation on it. Um, and there is a capacitor on the output, so it could be a little bit dangerous. I assume similar, there's pretty much the same case for the Game Boy Pocket, because um, the vast majority of the schematic is identical between the two. Um, in, a, uh, in ideal circumstances, it is pretty much impossible for the Game Boy to work without that without there being a load on the negative 19 volt rail on account of you wouldn't play if there was no screen, right? Well, the backlight kits don't use that rail, so unfortunately doesn't quite work out that conveniently. Um, it would also hopefully give me better um, efficiency and better battery life if I do that, but I Maybe not better battery life. Um, I doubt I can achieve the same efficiency that Nintendo achieved, but with the absence of the negative 19 volt rail, maybe, maybe I will. Who knows? Um, but yeah, that's that's all I've got for now. I can pop in this game here, check it out, see what we got. Yeah. Volume controls and I can play my uh, Crystal D Make slash um, Beta Prototype Space World game, which you can't actually play on a pocket. I mean, you can play the original, but you can't play the ROM hack. But anyway, there you go. How badass is that? Anyway, I, I, I've got nothing more to say. I'm sorry uh, this part isn't as long as the uh, previous two parts. I apparently didn't plan that out very well. Um, I thought I had quite a bit more work ahead of me, but I didn't realize that I was just simply missing a wire. So. Or maybe you didn't want to just sit through five hours of footage, and I'm sorry you decided to put yourself through that, but hey, no one forced you. <laughs> um, you know what? Let me go. Let me go get a sticker, deserving of this thing. I will be right back. All right, so I've got this. I'm pretty sure these are the same size. At least that that'll fit in that cutout looks like it will. It's going to be tight, but it'll be worth it. Oh, and I've got a serial number sticker. I kind of like it just leaving it clear and blank, but I also really like the idea of having a um, Game Boy Color sticker on it, and I have these awesome Game Boy Color stickers, so... I'm gonna go for it. 
What's the worst that could possibly happen? I think the cutout on the color is a little bit larger than the pocket, but with how the sticker is slightly undersized, it should be good. It just barely fits, but it's beautiful. I love it. I am going to save the uh, serial number sticker though, I don't want to put that on. Um, I don't know. I kind of want to get one of the uh, battery cover stickers though. I'm going to grab one of those. Alright, so the... Uh, I have the old style ones, but this one appeals to me. And it matches. Wipe down because I've been handling this thing nonstop. <laughs> ah, it's beautiful. I am so pleased with how this thing came out. Oh, but I do have to take it apart and clean that junk out. I don't know what that is. That's unfortunate. Well, there we go. Thanks for watching. Thanks for putting up with me. I will go ahead and throw links in the description to some cool shit. Uh, least, but not, uh, I will throw a link to STLs for, um, this button bracket I have. I did have to super glue this, the button to the bracket, but it didn't require any modification of the shell. This shell is 100% unmodified. Um, and I will throw a link to that plug as well. Um, it's slightly undersized, but tolerances being what they are, I think that's the best we can hope for. Uh, but otherwise, that's all I got. The only other thing I can try is seeing how Mystery Gift works, but I doubt it will be good. Um, but otherwise... Thanks for watching, guys. Have a fantastic, fantastic night. All right, so we're finally, finally almost done with this thing. Uh, I started working on this, God, I don't know, January, February, and it is September 5th, if you can see that from this, through the scratches on my watch. Um, I put this, I put this on hold for a while because, uh, well, I didn't quite have the motivation to finish the power management for this thing, and finally someone ended up beating me to it. Uh, so, here we are. The last, the final part of this video, uh, putting a Game Boy Color in a Game Boy Pocket. Uh, the biggest problem with this in its current implementation is the power management. Uh, now, I relatively recently did a somewhat longer stream on why the Game Boy Pocket power management sucks. Uh, the TLDW on that is the AAA batteries, and a good workaround for that is to use uh, something like these 10 volts or um, even these uh, Jugies here, which these are actually the production version. I finally got them. Still haven't tested them yet, but if they're anything like the engineering samples I have, then they should be very good. Um, but anyway, how these work is they put out a constant 1.5 volts until they're nearly depleted, which point they switch to a lower, well, the 10 volts just put out 1.5 volts until they're dead. Uh, the Jugies put out 1.5 volts until they're nearly depleted, then they switch to 1.1 volts, I believe. Uh, so if you have a power LED, it'll trigger that, but 
I don't, so that's why I've been using the 10 volts in this thing. Um, the Jugies are better for quite a few reasons compared to the 10 volts, but I have the 10 volts, so that's what I've been using in this. Um, the other Jugies I have are engineering samples, and I just, I don't know, I haven't been using them. I, I, I relegate them to the drawer of shame. But anyway, on to the actual subject at hand. Uh, I need to get a new power supply in this thing because part of the stock power generation uh, includes power for the OEM screen. We're no longer using the OEM screen and in fact that hardware isn't even hooked up. Uh, you can't see it because it's below the shielding but right under the shielding you can sort of see the edge of the package there. Uh, there is a power regulator for the stock screen that isn't even hooked up because it won't do anything for this aftermarket screen that we have in here. So one of the things that uh, is it the reason I want to talk about this is because in the original Game Boy um, that power management circuitry it's like a negative 19 volt rail or something like that it's unregulated but it's also tied to the 5 volt rail so since we're putting extra strain on the 5 volt rail we're overloading the negative 19 volt rail in the original Game Boy uh, now this is a video that I've been meaning to to work on at some point because I have done some Game Boy backlights and I think I might have an issue with those particular installs um, but long story short, we could end up overheating the negative 19 volt circuit. Uh, there's a particular diode in there that gets very spicy. Uh, there's also some capacitors that are at risk of exploding. Uh, the Game Boy Pocket is pretty similar. This capacitor right here on the top, that big electrolytic, that is on the screen voltage rail, which is still generating power but is not hooked up anywhere. So in this particular build, there's no outlet for that. It's unregulated, it's just building up in the capacitor. And I fear that if I play this too much, that capacitor could explode. Now, a workaround is to simply disconnect the power output from this DC-DC regulator or to just lift this capacitor. It'll do the same thing since this bottom half of the board isn't connected to anything, but that's, that's a half step at best, I think. Um, I also discussed this in my stream, but there are alternative voltage regulators that replace this, and um, that can sort of solve the problem, but there are problems with those other voltage regulators. Um, I haven't tested them per se, but I've heard one of them tends to be really noisy on the uh, audio circuitry um, and the other is from a company that I just really don't like and don't want to support so I'm not even going to bother. But it doesn't matter because there's another option. So this is the GBPP. It is made by by an unknown fellow who goes by the name Shive. You'll have to excuse the weather. Hopefully it doesn't interrupt this video with a power outage. But um, this Shive gentleman has designed this wonderful board and what sets this apart from the other boards is this is designed to be a full replacement. You just pop it on there uh, once it's populated and you should be good to go. This only does five volt but it also has lithium ion management circuitry in here. So if you want to, you can plug this in and then pop in a lithium ion battery. Similar to the Giltessa mod that we just did uh, with one major difference. This also does the power regulation, whereas the Giltessa mod just feeds your LiPo into the stock DC-DC converter, which it can have some problems, namely if you run this thing down, um, we can bring the voltage on the lithium ion battery a little bit lower than I'm comfortable with. I haven't exactly tested that yet, so I can't say how far it'll go down, and I didn't even think about talking about that when I did the video on this thing. Uh, but I am very pleased with 
most of the implementation in Giltessa's mod, especially the USB-C port. I thought I'd hate that, but turns out that's actually really clever and I, I, I like how that's done. Uh, but anyway, assuming this works, this solves all of the problems that we would have with the Game Boy Pocket. And you don't even have to populate the lithium ion circuitry if you don't want, you know, if you want to keep using it with triple A's. That works too, and it makes it even more reliable to boot. So if I were to swap these out, whoops, drop the batteries, pop in, I will see if the Duracells are going to work. Choose the Duracells because they're not as good batteries as the Lada's. Alright, so that boots. But let's try it with easy flash I have in the Giltessa mod. Yeah, see, my screen didn't even come on. But you can hear it boot looping anyway. So that is one of the problems with these batteries. That could also be a slight problem with my power circuit, so let's just double check. Nope, same thing. Nothing. We don't have a screen, we just have a boot loop. So I'm going to set these aside, and then we will try them after the mod. Let's see if we get any better performance. These should be a little bit more charged. Uh, it doesn't even sound like it's boot looping. Let's double check my power. Nothing. Won't even boot loop. So yeah, it won't even boot on either of these things. And that is... If you recall my stream, that is a problem of just AAAs in general that is inherent to the Game Boy Pocket. Uh, and nickel metal hydride batteries make it worse. And you can see, like, it boots on a regular cart. It's just the flash cart that's having the problem. We combine all of these factors, and it just gets worse and worse, so on and so forth. Let us double check with the Duracells. Yeah, it sounds like it starts booting, but it doesn't. So. I don't know what's up with that, but it doesn't matter because we've got we've got a PP to insert. So let's go ahead and get this built. I don't know what Shibe's plans are for this thing. Uh, I'm assuming he will release the Gerber files and the bill of materials so that um, you can build one on your own if you wish. Uh, the bill of materials does make this a little bit more expensive than the alternatives that I mentioned earlier, but it should work better, so I think it's probably worth it, uh, especially if you're doing a lithium-ion mod. This will be better than the two alternatives I mentioned earlier. Uh, three if you count Giltessa's, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway, uh, let us go ahead and get started. I ordered these particular boards from Osh Park, which means they come with these little tabs on them that need to be filed down. I already went ahead and did that on this board but it's just a matter of taking a small file and rubbing it on there until the tab is gone. But anyway, let's go ahead and get this built. I'm going to start with the harder to solder parts, which are going to be the lithium ion charge circuit and then the voltage regulator. And I'm gonna try and do those with my hot plate I don't have solder paste, so I'm just going to manually slather some solder all over these. Um, and hopefully that'll be good. And hopefully my power doesn't go out, because even though my lights and my camera are all battery powered, soldering iron isn't. Uh, ooh, you will want flux for this. Yeah, I've already had one brown out today. 
That is when the power goes out, but not long enough for things to shut down. It just, just drops. So like if your normal AC voltage circuitry is like 110, 120 volts, maybe it'll drop down to 60 volts or something. That's super not good for anything plugged in. It's even worse than just going off entirely, but... You know, it, it, it's what I have to work with for now. All right, so I just got plenty of solder on all those pads and a few extras. Borrow the power cable from my phone, hopefully it doesn't die. And we'll let that warm up. And I am going to start with the battery charge circuit. You got to be careful when ordering parts. Uh, I made this mistake, but in my defense, the bill of materials wasn't quite accurate at the time. Uh, this uses a TPS 61202 regulator. I ordered 61200 regulators. These are technically better, but it's not what the circuit is designed for, so you can't use them. Uh, these are the adjustable version, whereas the 61202 is the 5 volt. Um, 5 volt, it's not adjustable, it's just always 5 volts. But anyway. Good news is, I can make use of those other regulators. Oh, I have miscalculated. Oh, no, I haven't. We're good. Moisture sensitive, yeah, yeah, yeah. There. So I haven't soldered these particular chips before, but I've soldered similar, and I used hot air last time. I'm gonna try and use the George Foreman this time. And I might as well grab one of the voltage rigs. One unfortunate thing, like I said, I don't know what Shibe's plans are with this design, but unfortunately the voltage regulator stock is pretty heavily affected by the chip shortage right now, so if you want to build one, um, about a month ago would have been the time to do it. <laughs> I managed to grab the last TPS 61200 chips before the ETA on DigiKey went to um, end of 2022. Uh-oh, it's backwards. All right, so I just put those on totally backwards. I was wondering why that looked so weird, but that's okay. The footprint is similar. I'm probably gonna have problems with this one. But it looks like the lithium charge circuit is Nice. I need 
another set of tweezers. I didn't think this through. Yep, yeah, I didn't think that through. That's okay though, I think it just splashed off all the additional solder. Probably touch these up by hand, but not just yet. Let me go ahead and get the inductor ready because I think I got to do that one with hot air too, or with the George Foreman here. I think we can do everything by hand, which is my preference for this sort of stuff. Is that the red inductor? That seems... Yeah, there's only one inductor. Alright, I think we're good. Let's set that down. Set this aside to cool down. It's a noise hot and plug the phone back in because it was at 28% nice all right and so from here it's just soldering by hand a bunch of components I suppose I could have done the transistor on the grill too but eh. oh well what else do we have MOSFET key channel, here we go. Oh, it's a MOSFET, not a transistor. Same thing at the end of the day, I guess. Ooh, you get a bag in the bag. Don't mind if I do. put this stuff away, make sure it stays labeled. There's nothing worse than having a whole bunch of parts that you don't know what they actually do. Thankfully these are labeled, but that's not always the case with capacitors.
Boom. There we go. Now I think we just need to add some components. And that should be it. Look at that, it's even fused. Proper design right there. Did the inductors, I should be putting this stuff away instead of just piling it up. But here we are. I guess let's go ahead and find C5, which is 0.1 microfarad. Apparently I ordered exactly enough, which is weird. Is that right? 6.03? Yeah, I guess so. I normally order enough to build three, but I guess I figured ah, I have enough 0.1 Caps that I can make it work anyway. All right, so we need C5, which is right there, right up next to the inductor. Look like it's soldering. What the heck? It's not. There we go. Alright, now we need C2. Just right there. Hmm, that's not centered. There we go. C2, C7, C9, and C10. C10 is right here. Tweezers got sticky. Ooh, C7 is in here. It's kind of tight.
And where is C9? I wonder if that's supposed to be C9. I can't tell because there's a... Uh... Oh, nope, C9 is over here. Looks like that bottom one is R4 and then the top one C9. Let me double check that. Let's... So one of these is going to be ground. Yeah. That's probably the capacitor pad then. That's what I thought. We should do R4 first, but screw it. Oh, that's gone. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, and that's at least one reason why you always buy extra capacitors. Um, especially when they're literally fractions of a penny. Uh, I found these from another project that I bought the parts for years ago and still haven't gotten to. Hopefully it'll be good. Uh, they're 0805 instead of 0603, but might be able to make that fit just fine anyway. I never do that with capacitors except when I only have exactly as many as I need. Okay. Oh yeah, that'll be fine. Oh my god. Ripping the jeezless thing too hard. I'm gonna squeeze the tip right off of it. Come on. There. stuck there for now. All right, what do we have next? Let's go ahead and do the 10 microfarad capacitors. I probably also bought exactly as many as I need. Of course I did. Why wouldn't I? Good lord. Four of these things. And we need C1, C3, C4, and C6.
Ho. No. I need you. Come back. That's why order of operations is more important than uh, doing it in order that you're comfortable with. Exactly this reason. All right. What was I doing? Okay. C one, C three, C four, and C six. C one should be nice and easy the very least. I think that one's C4. One, three, four, and six. Where's three? Oh, that's probably right below it. There you go. Not having a good day. There we go. All right. What do we have next? A one microfarad capacitor. I literally only need one of these. So how many did I buy? A hundred. Good lord. Oh no, fifty. Excuse me. And this is for C8. Then we can do the resistors and we should be good.
Alright. Darn near there. Okay. Did the inductor. Didn't do the diode yet. Now we need resistors. I need 1K resistors. Three of them. At least I bought more than three. Even though I have tons of resistors. Resistors are one, two, and three. How convenient. There's two. There's one. That's four. And that's five. Hey, what? And there's three. Let's start with three. Flip those over just for aesthetic reasons. Try sliding that in. That didn't work. Well, because of the lack of flux. There we go. And R1 over here. I'm going to not try that again. Cool. Now we have, what, one, two resistors left and a diode. 27K is R4. Is that hard to get to one? That's my fault.
Alright, and one more. R5. Uh oh. Should be 3.3k, but I've run out of parts. 7k, one cur. Oh, there they are. And I only needed one, so of course I ordered a hundred. Oh, I'm forgetting the diode. Random solder ball, I'm sure that would have been fine. All right, let me double check the polarity on the diode and we'll get that installed. All right, so I think I would have been able to get this. Uh, also, I think my video recording just stopped. Hopefully, I still have my previous recording as well. Otherwise, I just lost over an hour's worth of work. Neat. Anyway, I think I would have been able to get this uh, diode polarity right without double checking, but we had a conversation about this and it was a rather long one and it got me doubting, so I had to double check. That's it. Now, I am going to go inspect this under the microscope and make sure all of my solder joints are correct on these two chips, and then I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned up with some isopropyl alcohol because there's a lot of flux residue over this thing, and then as soon as I get back, we will test and install it. Yeah, I can't actually tell if they're good, so I'm just going to go over them with the soldering iron anyway. Actually, we're going to need more flux. I haven't cleaned it yet anyway, so what the hell. Some nice good fillets going.
sure none of those are shorted. And I think we're good to go. All right, now I'm gonna go clean it up. It's probably fine. I'll be back. All right, look at that. So I have a solder joint to clean up, but other than that, I think it came out pretty darn nice. So the next step is going to be to install some header pins, which, ah, I do have some handy. Uh, I think we'll use red just so it's extra spicy. Oh, sh shit. Wait, no, that's fine. I'm just gonna have to separate that. Oh, I messed up another solder pad. Let's see how many of these I can chain by messing them up. Okay. easy solution I think it's going to be to just suck the solder right out of there not doing a very good job with this tool today I think part of the problem is that I'm getting no suction. Let's pull that up again. Goodness gracious. Okay. Plan B. Where is... Wait, what? I have lost. Oh dear. Never mind. I have found. Da week. Alright, that still isn't working, so I guess plan C is Hmm. Let's try this again before going to plan C. Uh, there we go. Should have started with the wick. Look at that. Alright. So that'll go in there. That'll go in there. That'll go in there. I'm 
gonna sandwich another one of these in there just to hold these in place. All right, there we go. Now, the smart thing to do would be to test this before installing this in my build. But, since when have I ever done the smart thing? say hopefully this is the last time I'm taking this apart but I know I've got at least one more ahead of me because I still got to add a uh, USB-C port which we'll do later because I don't have the parts for it right now not the way I want to do it anyway way to do this. I think peel that up. Pop the screen out, there we go. And get to this safely. Should have cleaned off the desk first. There we go. Ta-da! Gonna have to undo a little bit of my wiring, but it should be 
really coming down. Oh man, I should have did the pins like how they did. They cut three and then just slid the middle one out. That would have been so much easier. Oh well. Hmm. Not having any luck. Let me try from this side. See that spark? That is one of the things that I was trying to fix. That spark is from the LCD capacitor. There was star stored charge in there. Save that because it's still good. But well, shoot! I went through all that effort to solder on my pins all nice. I guess let's clean up this mess. Oh sure, I can do that with the solder sucker. Bottom one's proven to be difficult because it's a ground plane. Nice thick copper trace. But this will go in just like that. I'm going to trim these before I even solder them down because they're quite lengthy.
Why am I having problems with the solder sticking? These pins suck, man. There we go. I swear this doesn't usually happen to me. Come on. Soldered back in there. And we should be good to go. Like I said, we'll do the uh charge port another day. Um, I'd do it now, but I genuinely just don't have the parts to do it the way I want to do it. They're on order. battery install once I get the charge port because there's no point in installing a battery without being able to charge it. Not that I'm going to really play this thing that much anyway, but you know, I like I like having the option open. lost my insert. I'll have to find that or make a new one. I did mean to make a new one that's actually clear. Um, I'm not even going to button this thing up. Let's double check that it works first. As you know the rules. <laughs> that's not a happy noise. Uh, I think those batteries are just dead. They may be beyond help. <laughs> nope. <laughs> oh, now I'm getting nervous. Oh, there we go. Well, that's interesting. I promised... Well, hey, it works! Um... I'm kind of disappointed that it doesn't work with these, though. Instead, it just makes farting noises. <laughs> it's interesting that they make a different pitch. A lot is much much deeper but the 10 volts are still working okay well shoot that's actually kind of a disappointment I was hoping 
I was hoping these would work better, but they don't seem to work at all. Now, of course, that could be a problem with my my power switch not latching on like it's supposed to. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it seems to boot just fine, so that's nice, I guess. brightness. Well, I suppose that's not a real big, um, I don't know, nothing, nothing to write home about since it did that before on these batteries. But shoot, let me just try one more time. Now that it's on max brightness, I gotta see what noise it makes. Yeah, <laughs> now then, let's see what these are at. So they're probably going to read a little bit high because there's no load on them when I test them with the multimeter, but... Oh yeah, they're not even that low, 1.28. Point three, even. One point three. Yeah, that's that's got to be a problem with my power switch then, because I know these things will work. Down to. I I know the specs of the voltage regulator used, and that thing will go down to one point two volts, no problem. And we should be at two point four with two of these. So I don't know what's going on here. I'm guessing it's got to be the power switch. Well, let's try some regular alkalines. Yeah, same thing. Those won't even boot. All right, well, I will investigate further. I I think it's got to be my power switch, because I know that this thing will boot off of alkalines, this regulator. I don't know why it's not booting off of my alkalines, though. Oh, and I was supposed to fix that, and I never did. I don't think that's related, though. Let's try it with the power supply. Let's try and rule some things out. Three point seven volts. Hello. What was that? Yeah, it won't even boot off the power supply. It pulls half an amp, hits the uh, current limit. Oh, that might be what the problem is. It's hitting the current limit, and then the voltage drops two and a half volts. Let us modify the current limit.
700 milliamps. Oh, that is some crazy inrush right there. Yeah, that's kind of spooky. I don't know what it is, though. Without the... Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, when it's on, it's fine. It just spikes crazy high on boot. Be a capacitor thing. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of wild, though. I'm gonna have to have to investigate this more. Uh, but I don't. I don't think I have anything else for this video. It does work with some batteries, but my power supply and all three of these batteries two of them are chargeable two of them not cause it to spike stupid high on boot and fail to boot that is very interesting uh, anyway I guess I will catch you guys next time when I do the um, USB-C port I'm not gonna bother fixing this port now that I'm thinking about it because guess where USB-C port is going uh, but anyway Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time. Hey there, folks. So, gonna go ahead and continue with a project I left off on quite a while ago at this point. Um, I think it's been over a year since I've worked on this. Um, clearly, when I last left off, I decided it wasn't done, but it was also done enough that it's totally, totally usable. Um, the only real additional thing I wanted to do with this was I added a lithium ion battery charger. I am not using lithium ion batteries. I'm using AAA batteries still. Uh, the problem I have come across is both the 10 volt lithium rechargeable batteries and the uh, Jugi lithium rechargeable batteries. They're not very shelf stable. So what I mean by that is they are fantastic batteries, but there does seem to be a little bit of inherent, um, oh God, I'm forgetting the name. Uh, there, there's some latent power draw on the batteries, which means if you leave them sit too long, they're going to be dead next time you use them. And that has been the case almost every single time I've tried to boot this thing up. I don't play it often, um, not because it doesn't work or it's a bad Game Boy or anything, it's just... I don't really play Game Boy Color games that much. I tend to play more Game Boy Advance than anything. And even then, I don't play that many Game Boy Advance games. Uh, so it just so happens every time I'm trying to test something out and I reach for this Game Boy because quite frankly, it's one of my favorite builds and I need a Game Boy Color for something. This is the one I go to. Um, it's dead. That's annoying. I want to fix that. Case in point, I was trying to test out one of the new Pokemon ROM hacks that just came out basically yesterday, uh, or at least this is a demo version, this isn't the full release, uh, but the demo version basically came out yesterday, um, and I wanted to test it out, batteries were dead, swapped in new batteries, it's fine, but let's fix that. I have a lithium battery charger. Why not install a lithium battery? So for contrast, this is a regular Game Boy Pocket that has also been... Hmm, Sorry, I should have cleaned that a little bit better. Um, that has been modified with a lithium ion battery as well. Um, of course, this isn't a GBPP like this one is. Uh, this one actually has a full USB-C port and everything on there. There we go. Um, works great. I haven't charged this thing also in probably at least a year. Oh, look at that. It boots right up. Not a single problem. Uh, so... Yeah, that's, that's the problem I want to solve. Um, this battery probably isn't fully charged 
it's probably mostly depleted, but it still works and I can just plug it in. Uh, of course, this one does not support simultaneous play and charge, so I shouldn't, but probably could. Uh, but anyway, that leads us to the point of the video. Uh, I have this Game Boy Color here that I also swear I cleaned. Um, this is using one of Funny Playing's uh, newer battery kits. Uh, I have decided my original plan was to do USB-C in this thing, uh, like that other Game Boy Pocket I have, but I have decided that I'm going to go with Funny Playing's method and keep using the stock DC jack. Uh, so this thing, uh, Funny Playing sells these battery kits with these cables. Uh, normally these cables have a voltage converter in them to put out three-ish volts for the Game Boy because that's the voltage it's expecting, even though five volts does work. However, this is a um, charger for the internal battery. And of course I use an opaque shell so there's no charge indicator. But if you look in through the volume wheel, I swear you can see a little bit of a blue light in there. Somewhere. Well, there's probably too much lighting in here right now, but it does work and the Game Boy Color, of course, also works totally fine. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, the biggest hurdle is going to be the fact that the DC jack in this thing does not work, if I recall correctly. But we can fix that. Um, actually, I don't even know if we need to fix that. Uh, hang on, let's, let's get Cree. Well, this has a PP in it, I don't want to mess with it, just in case. Uh, let's just go ahead and tear it down. Let's just assume it's broken and replace it because I know I had to install a bypass. If you're just joining me for this video and you haven't seen the other ones that I have finally decided I will go ahead and publish, um, I am making this video well after I made the other video where I was waffling back and forth on whether or not to publish this. So. Um, sorry, I guess that video ended up being pointless. Um, but the decision ultimately came to me because uh, I'm seeing a lot more methods coming out to make these sort of things. Uh, and I think my method is probably among the harder of the methods. So now that there are easier and better methods, I'm a little bit more comfortable showing off specifically what I did. Um, now, obviously, I shot the rest of the, this video series thinking I was going to publish it, um, or at least, you know, with, with publishing in mind, even if I didn't think I was going to publish it. But uh, I actually made the decision today. on what is the last day of 2022. All right, comes apart pretty much like a regular Game Boy Pocket. Lift the power switch out of there and then we can just flip this whole board up. Uh, leave that in there. Uh, the other, the other thing that convinced me to do the funny playing Power, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let me clean these out. Hang on. All right, forgive me. It's, I've had this thing together and apart so many times that the screw posts are starting to get a little bit, um, worn. And there was a lot of plastic dust in there. Uh, anyway, the reason I decided to go with the Funny Playing mod, uh, ultimately is Two factor. One, I've gotten this far without having to make a single modification to the shell. I might as well finish the thing. Uh, but two, I did actually end up making a PCB that would solder onto this footprint of the um, of the DC jack and replace it with a USB-C port, and it does work. I also made a jig that I used when I did uh, the video on this thing to carve up the shell to fit the USB-C port. And that works great too. Um, I just don't want to do that again. 
like this works. I might as well keep using it, you know? Uh, yeah, it is laziness, but I will end up building another one of these things. I promise I'll put USB-C in one of them. Uh, so now I think I want continuity mode. And now that I'm thinking about it, the problem with this DC jack is that the internal switch is busted. Uh, so I had to install bypass. That's not going to matter for what we're doing here. So I'm just going to leave that as is. What I should have done, however, is clean up all this flux. I can't believe I let it get this far. All right. Oh, you know what I should do? I should detach this from the shell. Uh, unfortunately, this board is soldered in, but I think we can leave it. I'm just gonna peel that insulation up and then just detach the board from the LCD and then set that aside. It gives me a little bit more uh, working room. So now I need to solder up two things, I think. It should just be the battery input and then the charge input. I think I have that backwards. Yeah, the battery input is the bottom one. Uh, and I have two batteries. I don't know which one's gonna fit. Uh, well, I know this one fits, but I think we can make this one fit too, and this one's a little bit bigger. So I have a 102045, which is about 900 milliamp hours. I have tested these before. HHS tends to uh, understate the capacity on their batteries a little, but I don't remember specifically what these ones tested at. Um, that's not true, because I have one right here. Oh, this one tested even lower. This one tested at 785 instead of 900. Uh, so let's call it about a 750 milliamp hour battery. This is also the 102045 cell from HHS. And these two should be from the same batch. So if this one tested at about 785, I'd expect this one to be in the ballpark of that. Um, this one, on the other hand, is a Zinj 102050. It's rated at 1000 milliamp hours. It's probably not that either, but it is a physically larger cell, so all other things being equal, it should have more capacity. The problem is that it doesn't fit unless we carve up the shell, and like I said, at this point, I haven't had to modify the shell, so I think I want to try and continue with that trend. Um, I am likely going to replace this shell at some point. Um, I, I just don't expect to not kill it by accident at some point. Um, it does fit, but we'd have to cut out these walls here and keeping with my trend. Ooh, reverse polarity. I'm glad I noted that. <laughs> um, we're going to not use this one. I will send that back to the shadow realm because this one will fit no problem. But that also means we need to solder up some battery connectors. And I kind of hate how this is positioned. Because I, I want the text because it's cool. But I also don't know where to physically fit a battery connector in this battery compartment. Okay, well, we'll make it work. I have... Plenty of battery connectors. That's not gonna work. That's not gonna work either. I'm thinking, let's just use these. These are, yeah, that's not very helpful. Um, I have a link to where I bought these. I'll share that. But this has a plug that we will attach to the battery itself, and then a socket that I can just solder straight on to the PP. Maybe. Oh, no. I don't know if it fits. 
It doesn't... They don't have the same pin spacing. Ugh. Well, we can fix that. I am going to keep this connected just to give it a little bit more structural integrity. I'm just going to bend those apart a little. Red is positive, black is negative. I'll throw a link to these in the description, um, probably. I bought these on AliExpress years ago. They probably still exist. Now it fits enough to solder it. I'm not going to solder it yet because I have to attach up the um, those other two terminals in the back and I don't want to have to work around this big plug, but that'll totally work. Okay. Uh, I also have... are these the same thing? No. I have other connectors that have the socket on a lead as well. That would make it a little bit easier to make this disconnectable, but uh, I think I'm just gonna hard solder it. I'll put a socket in there so it can be disassembled without soldering, but still have to take it apart to disconnect it. I think that's a fine enough compromise. All right. So now we need to figure out how to get power from here to here, and I think the easiest thing is going to be either to replace this fuse or this diode. Um, I don't remember which, but that's what the multimeter's for. So I have it in continuity mode. Uh, I believe this is going to be the ground. Yep, which makes this positive. And so we just need to desolder this diode. Easy peasy. Move these wires out of the way a little bit. Both sides tinned, then I can just come in here and with my tweezers just tip both sides and pick it up. Easy peasy. And now I should be able to just solder that into the charge positive, and then I think the grounds are still going to be connected because why wouldn't they be? Uh, but let's get some wire here. I'll use this. No, I won't. That's going to be a pain in the butt. I suppose I can color coordinate this and use the proper color wire. Not like I've done that for any of the rest of this, but... This is an absurdly thin gauge, but this thing only charges at like 250 milliamps, so it should be fine. Is it 30 gauge? Yeah, it looks like 30 gauge. That's oh, okay. that in, solder it up, clean my iron and redo that joint because it's horrifying. You know what, I'm not doing so hot today. I should have had a snack before this. Okay. 
and then we'll just cut that to length and feed it in. Oh, but before I do that, let us triple check that I've got this all right. So if I plug this in, nothing should happen, but we're on voltage mode. I should be able to put that on negative, and then I should be able to touch this to the wire and get 5 volts. Indeed I do. And then let's double check on the PP down there. The labels are just under the Game Boy, but the left one is ground and then the right one is 5 volts. So if I put my plug on ground, and then right here again, I still get 5 volts. So yeah, it's all connected up. We're good. Alright. That means, I can come in here, Oh, I cut this way too long. That's okay. Did I not tin that? Oh, there it goes. Press that in, and then come over to the other side, and... This is the wrong tip for soldering to this pad. There we go. And if all went well, it's nice and snug. Good to go. Could tuck this away. Um, this is going kind of quick. That's a good thing. Uh, plug this in. Red to VBAT plus, black to VBAT minus. And then same thing again. And now we've got a nice crooked plug, but I should be able to unplug that. And then I just need to splice this in, but let's get the wiring length correct. So I'm thinking it'll be easiest if we just feed the wires through. And then we can feed them around. want enough slack to be able to fold this flat like this. So I want that about that long. And to make this as clean as possible, I am just going to solder directly to the battery. I don't recommend doing this, but if you want it clean, Peel that tape off. And we can fold this whole board up very gently.
And just like that, we're good to go. This board, yep, this has the DW01 and the MOSFET for uh, under voltage protection. Oops, I forgot to strip these. Ooh, and this feels like 26 gauge wire. Yep, that's nice. At least that's a little thicker. Do one wire at a time just to make sure I don't accidentally mix these up. Just remove this tape. There we go. Feed that around the same way it was. Oh, I didn't cut them to exactly the correct length, but that's good enough. Which side was that folded down to? Okay, that's what I thought. And we can fold that back down into there. And let me grab some more tape because I ripped that stuff. There it is. And we'll just run that around once. And we're good to go to reassemble. Uh, I'm gonna do some testing first, just in case though. Hopefully nothing explodes. Oh, 
won't charge us. I don't think it's booting up though. I see that reset. Hmm. Unplug that. Of course, this could just be a problem with my power switch replacement. But I hear no boot chime. Let me grab a screen and see what's going on. All right, this probably works, hopefully. entirely possible that this battery is just straight dead. Nope, it's at 3.9 volts. Okay. Ah, okay. I'll pause for a minute and figure this out. All right, I think I've got it. Helps if you read the instructions. I skipped a step. So we have to connect this system terminal right here to the power input of the Game Boy, which I'm just going to use the other side of that diode that we desoldered. Kind of makes sense, you know, you disconnect the power path, you got to reconnect it at some point. Uh, I'm going to use this bad boy here. What am I doing? I need a wire strip. This would have been a lot easier to do before soldering this thing in. Pull the screen off again. I have no idea if it's bad, but no sense in risking it. Easiest way to get this in let me tin it first at the very least Maybe I just make it hook shaped, feed it in from this side, and then I can shove the wire through the bottom. And the reason we have to do this is because this charge module does have uh, power path switching. So by using the battery input, it no longer sends power out in the normal direction because we want to be able to charge and play simultaneously without risking the battery.
put it under those wires again. Drop it right on that other pad. And I've either made a grave miscalculation or it should just work now. Ta-da! It's vacuuming. We can turn it off still. Reboot. And we have simultaneous charge and play. <laughs> cool. I'm very pleased with that. I don't know why I put this off so long. So now, I just need to reassemble this, and it is donezo, permanently. Unless I decide to replace the uh, shell at some point, which if I do that, I will probably have to also swap in a different backlight kit. I suppose I should take a moment to clean up that flux too. Oh, I really half-assed that, didn't I? Okay. on the front looks like it needs cleaning up. Oh, iron's still on. Well, this is proving to be stubborn flux. is unfortunate. All right, I guess I'll pause while I do this too. All right, several cotton swabs and IPA later. Um, I think I'm happy with that. It could be better, sure. Oops. I've had my overhead light off this whole time. That's my bad. Um, yeah. I'm pleased. Ooh, the, the tape job I did. That part was supposed to go under, but it didn't. because I messed up. I gotta redo that. top and we should be good to go. Be 
feed that in just like that. This thing is keyed, but I'm still paranoid about accidentally shoving it in the wrong way. And that's it. Almost. I gotta get the power switch positioned, I gotta drop my IR window back in. Tighten them all down, then back them up a quarter turn. The battery door on. And, uh, Bob Jonti, I guess. And now I can finally crank the brightness all the way up. And I can actually finally play this. Make sure it works on these uh, new flashcards. So far so good, but I haven't actually... This is literally as far as I've gotten. Um, all of a minute. But I don't want to do that right now. Let's try... The Easy Flash. Because that is one of my most power hungry cards. And you see... It's booting up on full bright. Oh yeah, battery dryer. I gotta replace that at some point. But look at that, huh? Huh? And of course, the time's wrong because the RTC is dead in this thing, but it works. That's the whole point. It fix. And oh, instead of turning that off, let me kill the lights here. Eh? Eh? I'm pretty pleased with that. I think it was cutting off before because this port is just insanely loose. Um, I might open this thing up again and replace this port because that's just. That's kind of ridiculous, uh, but you know, it does work. See how loose it is? <laughs> but yeah, I'm pleased with it. I have certainly enjoyed being one of the first people to build one of these things. Uh, this specific specific unit is, as far as I can tell, the first working one uh, that that someone has built. The, wor the first working Game Boy Color inside of a Game Boy Pocket housing. Uh, obviously, I'm one of the last to finish it. 
because uh, now people are coming out with custom motherboards that you just solder the Game Boy Color CPU to and Bob John to. And um, that should be quite a lot easier than all of the nonsense that I've done here. And of course, I'll check that out when it when those actually release. And by actually release, I mean at least one person has released their boards so far, and I already have them on the way. There is another person. Um, I will explain in more detail once I actually get them, uh, but there is another person working on these boards. Um, I have no idea how far along they are. It's, I mean, they posted prototypes to Twitter, so they're probably pretty far along. Um, but they take forever, and I don't necessarily trust their work, so... Anyway, that's besides the point. I am very pleased with this. And I'm gonna go get some lunch, I guess. I'll catch you all next time. Thanks for watching. And if you sat down and watched this entire series start to finish, thanks for sticking with me. I know this was not a quick one. <laughs> Um, I have no idea what the total time is. I, I'm thinking it's somewhere between four and six hours, but oof. Uh, the amount of work that went into this single Game Boy is kind of ridiculous, but I don't regret it. I'm happy with it. I like how it came out. What are you doing? Okay. Okay. Time to go. I'll catch you all next time. Thanks for watching. Keep on being awesome. And, um... There's almost no chance this goes up before the new year, so I hope you guys are enjoying 2023 so far. Um, but it is what it is. Love yous. Looking forward to uh, another great year. Okay, we're not done. I did a dumb. Uh, <laughs> I was sitting here playing this thing, um, actually checking out the game, like I said I was going to do. Um, and noticed, feeling the battery cover, that it is not sitting flush. Um, now, those of you who are paying very close attention probably know exactly what I've already done, and that is I totally forgot to remove the battery terminals, so let's fix that, shall we? It's not the end of the world. Um, the problem is that these battery wires are now being pinched. So I would like to fix that before the insulation gets worn through and the battery starts shorting on the casing. Now, the easy option here is to just break these off, but I think I'll I think I'll put some effort in to try and do it proper. I mean, it it'd be a shame to mess this up so close to the end, you know. Big suck. I should have grabbed this ahead of time. I'm sorry, I, I, I keep doing this sort of stuff. Actually, I suppose we don't. I could do it this way. I'm 
not having very good luck because I can't see what the heck I'm doing. Oh, well, I almost got it. It's not even the one I need to remove, though. Get that. Try and. Oh, that one came right out. There we go. I'll just add some solder to these to clean that up aesthetically. And just leave that be. I could remove all of the solder, but half of the goal with this specific mod was to Make it so that it looks like a Game Boy Pocket, not necessarily stock. Ooh, that's a problem. But at the very least, you know, that's a sleeper build. Oh, shoot. I ripped up the board a little bit. Bad news is that I will never be able to reinstall battery terminals. Good news is that I never planned to. But it doesn't look too bad from the front and you won't see that from the back, so it is what it is. Little solder balls from when I uh, pulled it off. It uh, knocked some solder around. But now I think we're done. <laughs> Ugh. Kind of a shame that I ripped that up, but oh well. I could have done worse. Doesn't look too bad. I swear, I ought to just glue that thing in. Okay. Ta-da! Now we're good to go. One thing I forgot. Ooh. 
That's not where I want that wire to be routed. There we go. One thing I forgot to check when I was assembling it just a few minutes ago, uh, this power switch needs to be pushed under the housing. Oops. Noticed that almost immediately after I stopped filming just a few minutes ago. Kinda panicked when I noticed it because that is exactly how you crack housings. And like I was just saying, it'd be a shame to get this far only to uh, to to fumble the ball at the home plate, as they say. I don't see any damage to the cables. I should have inspected it while it was apart, but I do have enough access. Now that sits in there, and now the battery cover is nice and flush. Funny how that works. And now I can continue demoing my game. Alright, now that's all I've got. So I will, uh, end this video here, uh, splice it together with the other one, get this uploaded. Hell, I might just splice them all together and we'll have a marathon. All right, that's all I've got. I'm out for realsies this time. Um, thanks for sticking with me. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I don't know why that reset back to the minimum brightness. I don't remember if there are any touch sensors in this thing, um, but it's working now. It feels better than it did, especially now that it's actually flush. And uh, catch us all next time. Happy New Year.